We know the relationship between an object's velocity and acceleration. <clears throat> if we've got a velocity function, then the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity. An object is thrown upwards with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Given that acceleration due to Earth's gravity is a constant, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, find V of T. A problem like this is the opposite of the problems we have been doing. Instead of starting with a function and trying to find its derivative, we start with the derivative and try to find the function. If we give this a little thought, we might eventually conclude that the velocity should have a negative nine point eight t term in it, because when you take the derivative of this, you'll get negative 9.8. We might then think a little further. This does have the property that its derivative is this acceleration. but it doesn't have the property that the object is being thrown with a velocity of 10. This object is being dropped with an initial velocity of zero. So we think a little more and we say, oh, well, we can put the plus 10 there. It won't change the velocity. This function still has the property that its derivative is the acceleration. But now, the initial velocity is 10. I know we went through this a little fast. It requires practice, but um, definition. An 
anti-derivative of f of x is a function frequently represented as capital F of X with the property that the derivative of capital F of X is lowercase f of x. <laughs> and what we had up here was a concrete example where we needed to find an antiderivative to solve a problem where given the derivative of the velocity, we're asked to find the velocity. In this video, we've introduced the concept of an antiderivative, one of the central definitions of calculus. We'll go on to do a few examples and state a few results involving antiderivatives.